Origin and Direction of Magnetic Fields. In 1819, while searching for a relationship between electricity and magnetism, and physicists like to do that, when they see phenomena that can be closely related, they want to see if they're even more closely related. For example, positive and positive charges repel, north poles and north poles repel. They both have forces, they have fields that look very similar. So Hans Christian Ersted, who actually knew Hans Christian Andersen, set up a current carrying wire. Here's the wire up here. And he had a magnetized needle. And here's a drawing from 1876. And you can actually click here to see what a 19th century physics textbook looks like. When there was no current in the wire, the magnetized needle here pointed north. Let's say north is that direction there. However, when current was put through the wire, the magnetized needle rotated on the pivot and pointed at a right angle to the electric wire. If you switch the direction of the current, you went the other way, the magnetized needle, instead of spinning this way, would spin in the opposite direction and would again be at a right angle to the wire. The story is that Ersted was doing a demonstration in his classroom where he had a current carrying wire and he turned the current on, on and off. And nearby, he had, a, he had a compass for some reason. And people noticed that the compass needle would move when he turned the current on and off. If that's true, and that would, that, that would be one heck of a class lecture. So you can see what's happening here. We're claiming that an electric current is producing a magnetic field. Ersted deduced that an electric current produces a magnetic field. And furthermore, that that magnetic field was a lot stronger than the Earth's magnetic field because it affected the compass needle more. The entire Earth was telling that compass needle to point north and this little current moved the compass needle. And just as an aside, in addition to this first experimental evidence that electric and magnetic fields are related, he produced aluminum for the first time from a chemical reaction from aluminum chloride. And how does that relate? Well, in the 1960s, builders started using aluminum for household wiring because it was cheaper than copper. However, that's banned for household wiring now because it would oxidize at connection points, which would increase its resistance. It would heat up sometimes melting and causing house fires. So wiring is now inside houses all done with copper. And if there is aluminum wire, they have special connectors to hook it up to the copper so that doesn't happen. Here's a picture of Hans Christian Ersted, who is a physicist and a chemist. And here's a picture of how a current carrying wire that generates a magnetic field, it will deflect a compass needle. Here you have no current and all the compass needles are pointing to the north. You put a current, and look at this. All the compass needles point, they go around in a circle. So that seems to indicate that the magnetic field will circle the wire. Now in the previous pages, we talked about how the magnetic field was perpendicular. Well, what if you come out of the page here and you put a compass needle right here, your little magnet right here, it would point in that direction. You could kind of see it if it were here, and that is perpendicular to the direction of the current. And the key takeaway here is the magnetic field encircles the wire. There are also magnetic fields up here. We could probably put a whole stack of little compasses and they'd all be acting the same. We're now in a position to explain an earlier slide. This was the one where we had the north geographic pole of the Earth is here, and we said that was a south magnetic pole, and you can see how the magnetic field lines enter there. And we stated that the Earth's magnetic field is caused by the circulation of molten alloys in the Earth's outer core. So how does that relate to what Ersted just did? Well, picture the molten alloys as having many, many, many free electrons that move together. Well, what's that? That's a current. Charge per unit time is a current. And that's what Ersted demonstrated. Currents create magnetic fields. Ersted observed that the direction of the magnetic field depends on the direction of the electric current. And that's because the magnetized needle swung different ways, 180 out, depending on which way the current was going. The direction of the magnetic field is given by the right-hand grip rule, also just known as right-hand rule number one, or the corkscrew rule, a couple different names. And before you think that physicists are that funny, uh, it's actually 
using vector calculus that gives you the direction of it, using something called vector multiplication or the cross product or the curl. But we're not going to get into that now. That'll have to wait till AP Physics C. Here's how you do it. Take your right hand and stick your thumb in the direction of the current of the wire. Then curl your fingers around it. And that, the direction that those fingers are curling, see how that magnetic field is in the same direction? That tells you the magnetic field direction. You could also do it this way. Well, actually, this is just another view. You grab around the wire, thumb goes in the direction of the current, and see how these magnetic field lines are going in that direction, following the directions of your fingers. Now, don't do this for real. You never grab a wire unless you have to. So we're just kind of doing this on pieces of paper. Let's be safe. To find the magnetic field at any point on these concentric circles, you draw a tangent to the circle. So if you want to find the magnetic field at this point, it would be pointing in that direction. At this point, pointing in that, whoops, pointing in that direction. You take the tangent. And by the way, there's not just one magnetic field here. The loops keep going and they're infinitely close together, okay? We're just representing it with one set of concentric loops. Note, there is no component of the magnetic field pointing towards or away from the wire, right? Unlike electric charges, right? The field actually originates on the charge or comes back to it. Magnetic fields, due to a wire, there's no component pointing towards it they are always perpendicular to it. When you have a current circulating around an iron core, you create a magnetic field, and that device is called an electromagnet. When you turn the current off, it is no longer a magnet. So a very practical use for this are industrial electromagnets. You can see here's the magnet. You have wires going down to it. And here it's picking up a bunch of metallic junk. So you can pick things up, swing the scrap somewhere else if you want to dump it in a dumpster, and then you would turn the current off. The junk is no longer attracted by the electromagnet because there's no current there, there's no magnetism, and it falls down. We can represent an electric field very well on two-dimensional paper. The electric field, of course, is three dimensions, but we can get a pretty good idea of what it looks like in two, right? So here's a positive charge. We can draw the electric field. And even though this is really would look like a sphere in three dimensions with all the lines coming out, this lets us communicate what's going on. However, the magnetic field loops around a wire. So magnetic fields need to be shown as three dimensional to be understood. Somehow we need to show this third dimension on paper. Okay, here's the symbol thing. Left and right, that's good for vectors. Up and down. How do we represent the third dimension on a page of paper or a whiteboard? Here's the convention we'll use. Picture your magnetic field line as an arrow. And a vector, again, has magnitude and direction. Here we're worried mostly about direction. The head of this arrow points in the direction of the field. So if I want to represent a magnetic field going into the page, what would I see here? You'd see the back of the arrow, kind of like the fletching on it there. That looks like X's. So when you have this, this tells you that the field is into the page. If somehow that arrow is heading towards you, or you let's make it peaceful, you're holding it and looking at the head, you're just going to see the dot at the tip of the arrow here. So we're going to use a series of dots to represent a field that is coming out of the page. Here's how the magnetic field would look inside and outside a current carrying loop. Here I have a loop of wire, the current's coming like this and down here. Using the right hand grip rule, so we would grab the wire either here or here, and again this is just figurative, we're not finding a wire somewhere and grabbing it. You point your thumb in the direction of the current. See on this side your thumb's pointing up because the current's going up. On this side your thumb's pointing down as you grip the loop because the current is going down. You curl your fingers around the loop. So outside the loop, you can see that your fingers are pointing out of the page. So the magnetic field is dots. If I keep curling my fingers in, within the loop, the magnetic field goes into the page. You get the same result with your hand over here. You curl into the page here, and then if you were to keep 
curling your fingers, the magnetic field is, is coming at you outside the loop. You could put your hands anywhere you want and you would get the same result. It was determined experimentally, this is the coolest word on this whole page here, by Ersted, Ampere, and others that the magnetic field decreases as the distance R increases away from the wire. R doesn't always stand for radius, sometimes it just stands for distance. The Bios of R law and the Ampere's law, which will be done in APC physics, both calculate this value. And the magnetic field is mu zero i over 2 pi r. Mu zero is called the permeability of free space and has the value 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th tesla meters over amps. Nice thing about this constant is this 4 pi, when it's divided by 2 pi, you get rid of the pi. Mu zero, the permeability of free space, it's a constant and it relates the magnetic field produced by a current or a moving electric charge in a vacuum to the value of the current. Permeability will have different values for different media. We're dealing with the one in a vacuum, free space. And once again, did you notice when you solve for B, using the equation on the previous page, you didn't even have to use pi. The value of mu zero and the geometry of the problem enable us to cancel out pi. The constant mu zero is the magnetic equivalent of the electrical constant epsilon zero, which is the permittivity of free space. Let's work a problem. Here we have an electric current flowing into the page. That's what the x means, and the i here shows that it's a current. What is the direction of the magnetic field? We'll use the right-hand grip rule. Orient your right thumb, your right-hand thumb, not the left, right-hand thumb into the page in the direction of the current. Right? The x means it's into the page. You can also use a pencil pointing its tip in the current direction, into the page. Curl your four fingers trying to grab the pencil. The magnetic field is in the same direction as your curling fingers, which should be in the clockwise direction. And you would draw several circles around the current going into the page because you have a magnetic field that goes out like that keeps curling around a number of concentric circles. An electric current flows to the right. What is the direction of the magnetic field? Use the right hand grip rule. Orient your right hand thumb to the right. Same direction as the current. That's your thumb going in that direction. Curl your four fingers. Let's see, your fingers should be on this side. Kind of stubby fingers, but curl them and curl them around the current, trying to grab the pencil. The fingers will go into the page below the current and then you keep curling in them and they'll come out of the page on the other side of the current. And if you were to look at that diagram from the right, if you could somehow get into the page and look from the right, you'll see that that's encircling the current carrying wire. An electric current flows in a counterclockwise direction around a circular loop of wire. What is the direction of the magnetic field? Orient your right hand thumb or a pencil in the current direction. The current is pointing down at this arrow position. Curl your four fingers trying to grab the pencil. The fingers will go into the page on the outside of the loop, which is why you have the X's out here, and then you keep curling it and you'll find that it's going out of the page inside the loop. You can choose a tangent line anywhere on the circle as long as it points in the counterclockwise direction. It actually might be easier to choose a tangent line over here when you try and curl your finger. So you stick your thumb in that direction, right? And then your fingers come out like this. You curl them and they'll be curling into the page when you're outside the wire. And then as you kind of grab the wire, you'll see that hopefully you'll see that the fingers are coming out of the page. What is the magnetic field at a point two meters away from a wire carrying two and a half amps of current? We list our givens. Here's the current. Here's the distance away from the current carrying wire. We have our formula for the magnetic field. We substitute in our givens. And then let's see, we can notice hopefully that this two pi cancels with this four pi and leaves you with the two. This two cancels here. So we're actually just left with 2.5 times 10 to the minus seven Tesla. So don't reach for the calculator right away. See if you can cancel out some easy numbers. And you can see here, all we're left with is this 2.5 and this 10 to the minus 7th.